Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. A dispute ending with a man getting shot on the northwest side. Police found the victim at an apartment complex near Loop 410 and Bandera Road early this morning. Jonathan Goto spoke with a witness who says the shooting actually happened somewhere else. Investigators on scene tell us they responded to the Cypress Cove Apartments near Northwest Loop 410 at around 4 this morning for reports of a shooting. They say the 32-year-old victim was found sitting in this SUV with a gunshot wound. Police say the victim told them he and the suspect had gotten into a fight. Now, we did have the opportunity of speaking with the victim's brother, who says his brother was shot here at Roxy Sports Bar and managed to drive about two miles down the road to Cypress Cove Apartments not knowing he was shot in the back. Investigators say the victim was treated by EMS and transported to University Hospital and is expected to be okay. No arrests have been made. This case remains under investigation. Jonathan Cotto, at 12 News. A pair of unrelated murder cases remain open years after the crimes were committed. This noon, police are hoping someone will come forward with information and help them find justice. The first case happening back in September of 2019, officers called to the 3800 block of East Commerce Street. That's on the city's east side. Police say someone shot 36-year-old Anthony Donnell Clark in the head. It happened from a distance with a high-powered rifle. Clark was pronounced dead at the scene. The second case police want to solve happened in September of 2018 on the east side as well. Police say 44 year old Edion Chase was standing in the parking lot of Big Castle Smokehouse. That's near I-10 and North Foster Road. Officers say that a person who was across the street shot Chase who died at the scene. The shooter took off in a white vehicle headed westbound on I-10. If you have any information about either of these cases, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Now to the coronavirus pandemic here in Bear County. The positivity rate dropped another three points this week. In the past seven days, we've seen an average of 1,200 cases per day in Bear County. Meanwhile, across the country, an increasing number of hospitals across the country are asking for your help and resources. As ABC's Faith of Bay reports, the U.S. now seeing more COVID infections and hospitalizations than it did a year ago. A rapid surge in COVID cases among children spawning new disturbing milestones in the pandemic. U.S. hospitals on average now admitting more than 365 kids with the virus every single day, the highest level since the start of the pandemic, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics. It comes after the U.S. reported a new weekly record of more than 252,000 child COVID cases just last week. It has certainly been by far the most impactful surge, really hitting children and adolescents. Younger patients are dying from this and uh, it's uh, quite disturbing. The alarming rise in new infections already disrupting the new school year, causing at least 1,400 schools across 35 states to shut down in-person learning. 11-year-old Levi Quartucci was back in school barely a week when he tested positive for COVID-19. It's unclear where and how he picked it up, but he spent four days fighting it off in a hospital bed. It just felt horrible throughout the whole time. Kids get infected from the adults in their lives. That's the major source. If you don't want to get vaccinated for yourself, get vaccinated for your kids. 75% of U.S. adults have now received at least one dose of a COVID vaccine, according to the White House. But there aren't enough fully vaccinated people to stem the steady flow of patients into hospitals. Health officials worry about dwindling resources. In Idaho, hospitals in crisis could soon make tough decisions about who can get life-saving treatments. When we get short on certain supplies, oxygen or ventilator equipment or what have you, um, that may uh, require us to make some tough decisions. And health officials are also tracking the mu variants confirmed in at least 16 states so far. But for now, health officials say they don't think it's as much of a threat as the Delta variant. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. And new at noon, the San Antonio Zoo is making it easier for you to get the COVID-19 vaccine and for children to get their back to school shots. It's also throwing in an incentive to get folks to roll up their sleeves. Starting today, the zoo is partnering with Metro Health to host a vaccine clinic in its parking garage. It will offer the Pfizer and Johnson and Johnson COVID-19 vaccines. Also available back to school vaccinations like tetanus and the HPV shot. 
No registration is needed. Just show up. We'll give you the paperwork and we will get you vaccinated. Here's the bonus. The zoo is giving two free tickets to ride the San Antonio Zoo Eagle train to everyone who receives the coronavirus vaccine during the event. The clinic will be open until 2 this afternoon and from 10 in the morning until 2 p.m. tomorrow and again on Friday. Happening tomorrow as well, another job fair taking place in our community. The Shirt Cibolo Universal City Independent School District wants to hire several people. The district holding the hiring fair tomorrow in the boardroom of the William Malish Building. That's at 1060 Elbel Road in Shirts. Open positions include bus drivers, custodians, cafeteria workers, and substitute teachers. You can pre-register. However, walk-in interviews are available, and some candidates could get a job offer right there on the spot. It starts at 9 in the morning. It ends at 1 in the afternoon. The Thomas Jefferson High School Junior ROTC came together to honor the fallen ahead of the anniversary of the 9-11 terror attacks. Students, staff, police, and fire department members were all in attendance. And Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar was the guest speaker. He says he encourages people not to just remember 9-11. Remember 9-10. Remember the last day that we all felt safe. Remember the, the day that we all had this false sense of security like nothing would ever happen here and then it turned out we were wrong. And so I urge them to live their lives, absolutely. Live your life, be happy, uh, but just be vigilant and know that things like terrorism can find their way into our society and find their way into our lives. And The ceremony took place at the flagpole outside of the school. Bear County District Judge Peter Sagai planning to step down in October. He's been there for nearly 16 years on the bench of the 225th District Court. Judge Sakai submitting his resignation today in a letter to Governor Greg Abbott. Among his final duties, Judge Sakai presided over a special docket for foster children without placement, which then resulted in the removal of foster children who had been sleeping in Child Protective Services offices and placed them in safe accommodations. Sagai urged Abbott to keep foster children in mind. Still to come this half hour, the Cowboys already restructuring Dak Prescott's $160 million contract. Larry Mears with the reason why and how much money they're going to save coming up. A local artist has been tearing down walls by painting them. She is one of a growing number of women who paint murals, a segment of the art world that has been largely dominated by men. As Katrina Weber shows us in this week's If These Walls Could Talk, she has made a name for herself, mainly by writing her name. With bright colors and sharp lines, Paula Sanchez lets the world know just who she is. However, she herself has never had any question. I just like to break, break those norms of what women should be doing and shouldn't be doing. For decades, she has been breaking down walls in the art world by painting them. One of an increasing number of women muralists. Growing up in Puerto Rico, she started out painting graffiti, but wasn't always welcome. She was hassled by her male counterparts. I ended up getting a great Dane. <laughs> so whenever I would go paint, I'd take him with me. So no one ever bothered me after that. <laughs> because of that, Dane soon became her calling card, the name she still paints on walls. You see that big white wall right there? Although she now is a trained artist and art teacher. I feel like, I like I, I'm in a, between both worlds. Her graffiti roots run deep. Sanchez says while the word graffiti may raise all kinds of negative images in some people's minds, it's actually a legitimate form of art. In fact, she says it's what gave birth to more acceptable forms of street art, such as murals. You wouldn't have any of this. You wouldn't have a bunch of the famous clothing brands that people pay hundreds of dollars for. Giving others a way to show off their skills is a big part of what she does. She runs the paint yard, which sells the tools these artists need and often provides them a place to paint legally. A lot of times I go to events and people don't even want to give me an opportunity to paint. So I just started creating my own events. One of them recently led to this colorful collaboration near downtown. And if Sanchez has her way, she'll continue making her mark among men, one wall at a time. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Pretty incredible talent. I just hope it doesn't melt. 
Can that paint melt on the wall? I think it'll fade with time, but then we'll get a new one. Yeah, go back and repeat it. Is this a cool front? What's going on? No, no, I wish it were. <laughs> Uh, it's heating up quick. We're going to be up near 100 again today. The one thing that we've been talking about all week, though, is the fact that humidity levels will be lower, especially this afternoon, next couple days. The aquifer, it is up. It's up 10 foot foot, 660.2, but we're still below that 660 mark for the 10 day average. So we're still in stage one water restrictions. Molds dropped today, moderate 750. Fall elm is low. We're going to look at the tropics. We'll look at what's going on as far as that dry air is concerned, too. Coming up. I don't know if you saw this, but last night, Sarah Spivey was trying to explain that even though it was 100 all the way across the board for a couple more days, uh -huh. it would be a dry heat. Oh. Or dry oh. er heat. Oh, the dry heat thing. The, yeah, she was trying to really spin <laughs> it. I, I, I congratulated her. Dry heat. That's the key. I, you know, look, we, we've had a humid summer. It's a little bit of dry heat. Uh, it's a good thing. My book, I, I think. You know, we are going to be up near 100. That, that's that part's for sure. The one thing the low humidity does for you, though, is uh, the mornings are a lot nicer. Let's look at the, the morning lows coming up. So 70 down to about 69 Friday morning, 70 Saturday morning. That feels good. And uh, I think a lot of places in the hill country will be in the mid 60s, if maybe if not lower 60s. Hilly out there. That's uh, jacket weather around here this time of year. I tell you what. Uh, so yes, it is going to feel a little bit better. We're going to have some dry air in here for several days and then things change pretty abruptly as we get into next week and I'll explain that here in just a second. First outside 91 calm winds feels like 97. So we do still have a heat index that dry air isn't here just yet uh, with the dew point staying right there at 70. It's a toasty day out there and I, I do think with the numbers already at 91 that we could easily get up into the upper 90s, if not close to 100 today. There are some clouds trying to develop here, so we'll go mostly sunny, partly cloudy this afternoon. 86 Bernie Stage, 92 New Braunfels, 89 in Seguin, 91 in Hondo. Bigger picture, notice we've got some clouds developing out here in the whole country too. This is an area I want to watch. Some of these clouds could bubble up into some showers or storms, short-lived showers and storms as a piece of energy comes in from the north. 88 Rock Springs, 92 right now in Del Rio. And there's a look at the dew points starting to ease down a little bit across some of our northern counties. In the low 60s up there around Fredericksburg, we're at 70 here in town. I suspect that number will come down quite a bit later today. This computer model brings it down into the mid 50s by this afternoon. Maybe not that low, but you'll feel the difference, I think, by certainly by tonight in to tomorrow and then those numbers stay in the 50s. That's in the pleasant category. We're not looking at heat indices next few days and again some pretty nice mornings. That moisture builds back though by Sunday into Monday. Here's the big picture across Texas and you'll notice we've got some clouds and some rain up here around Dallas. That's that piece of energy I was talking about. We can see it here on water vapor. It's right there and with our high anchored over Colorado that's pushing everything south. And as that little piece of energy comes through, there's just enough moisture out here over the hill country where there could be some showers and storms that develop. Computer models show that by five o'clock doesn't show much, but I think we could get a couple pop ups and then by eight o'clock still seeing a few and then the, everything dies down a little bit later tonight. Most of this thing west of San Antonio we will put in a 10 percent chance of rain, but that really is for our friends. Uh, west of town 99 the forecast high today northeasterly winds could be a little bit breezy later today 10 to 15 miles per hour here is a look at the moisture in the atmosphere and this is one thing we've been looking at the past couple days but you see that uh, red and orange color down there in the gulf of mexico that is where we have some pretty good deep tropical moisture uh, that's saturday afternoon by sunday that starts to pour in here so we go from having a pretty dry atmosphere to uh, having a lot more moisture in place. And I think that's going to help to create some showers and storms, some maybe some good downpours Monday afternoon and Tuesday afternoons. So that's what we have to look forward to next week. Everything flips back around to a more humid and potentially wet scenario. So 10% chance today in the Hill Country, 99. We'll go 100 tomorrow, probably pretty close to that on Friday. 98 Saturday, things start to change a little bit Sunday. A little bit more cloud cover, 20% chance of rain. And right now we'll go 40% chance of rain Monday and Tuesday, guys. Thanks for the dry heat. You got it.
Like I say, so Friday night football, it won't be quite as bad because it'll be a dry heat. Thank you, Justin. Football, so. Isn't that I nice? appreciate that. Yeah. I do appreciate the cooler mornings as well. Ooh. I think that's pretty nice. Yeah. Go for a walk around the neighborhood to get pumped up to come into work. And here I am, ready to go. Tomorrow night, the NFL is ready to go. <laughs> Cowboys and Buccaneers. And as we know, the Super Bowl goes through Tom Brady. Game one is tomorrow night. And Tyrod Taylor is the man out in Houston. Coming up. we did no one could take away from us so in, in one way you're not really defending it much you know it's kind of in the books and you know they can't take away what we've done it's really just a whole nother year and experience Tom Brady and the Buccaneers will kick off their bid for back-to-back -back Super Bowl titles tomorrow night with the Dallas Cowboys and Big Board Sports Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Some two days before kicking off the regular season, the Dallas Cowboys restructured the contract of quarterback Dak Prescott to create $5 million in cap space. In order to do that, they made $6.2 million of Dak's four-year $160 million deal into a signing bonus as Prescott prepares to play in his first game since week five of last season when he suffered a compound fracture and dislocation of his right ankle. And one of his star wide receivers, Amari Cooper, is coming off ankle surgery as well that kept him out of all of off-season workouts and most of the preseason, but that has not lessened his opinion of his abilities going into his seventh season in the NFL. Do I think I'm the best? Yes. Uh, have I proven it? I wouldn't say I have. You know, there, there are other guys who um, who have actually put up some great numbers. You know, they've they've had they've taken advantage of their opportunities and stuff like that. Um, so I, I'm I'm just still trying to take advantage of my opportunities and still trying to uh, put up those numbers to lead the league um, in yards, touchdowns, all across the board, really. And only after I've done that will I, will I say I'm the, the, the best um, and, that, and that I've proven myself to be the best. I don't think I've proved it yet, though. But do I think I am? Yeah. Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are ready to host the Dallas Cowboys tomorrow night to open the 2021 NFL season. The seven-time Super Bowl champion Brady said the Bucs are not really trying to defend the title because it can't be taken away. Here's what Brady told the media yesterday about the Bucs season opener. You know, we got a great opportunity ahead of us. And, um, you know, anytime you start the season, it's the first game of the year, it's pretty exciting. I know uh, the stadium will be packed and, um, It'll be an exciting night for all of us. We worked pretty hard to get to this point, and now we're through all the physical prep. Now we got a couple more days to um, 48 hours plus to really mentally prepare and lock in and then try to go play our best game. Cowboys and Bucks kick tomorrow night, 720 from Raymond James Stadium. The Buccaneers are favored by eight. The Houston Texans will kick off their regular season Sunday afternoon when they host the Jacksonville Jaguars at NRG Stadium, an AFC South contest right out of the gate. Now that new head coach David Coley has officially named Tyrod Taylor as a starting quarterback for the game, one in the midst of controversy surrounding Deshaun Watson, what do his teammates think of Taylor starting the season with him under center? Uh, I think that, you know, he's he's a threat with uh, in three three places, three areas. He's a threat with his arm, uh, his legs and with his mind. And so uh, uh, we fully expect him uh, to make whatever plays are available to him uh, in terms of a game plan and game plan runs. You know, that's not my job uh, and we don't have all of the game plan put in right now uh, anyway. Uh, but uh, I'm sure that he'll be ready to affect the field in a, a bunch of different ways. Kickoff for the Texans on Sunday against the Jaguars is noon, and the Jags are favored by three on the road. Back to Tom Brady. I saw a picture, I guess it was yesterday, maybe mm -hmm. it was today, but he had all seven rings on. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Like, oh, oh, man. man. <laughs> How does he impressive. lift his hands up? Yeah, <laughs> something else. Thanks, Larry. A famous blue pup is turning 25 years old today, and it's not in dog years. The special surprise from Blue's Clues creators it has people feeling nostalgic. And a pack of zebras going for a stroll through a Maryland community <laughs> causing people to do a double take. How animal control workers plan to get the creatures back home. We want to bring you the latest now, that developing story out of Mexico where a powerful earthquake rocked the resort town of Acapulco. At least one person is dead. ABC's Rena Roy has a closer look at the destruction across Mexico. 
powerful earthquake striking near the popular tourist town of Acapulco Tuesday night. The epicenter just 10 miles from the coastal city. Buildings rocking and swaying, walls crumbling, power poles collapsing. The 7.0 magnitude quake even shaking the ground for about a minute nearly 200 miles away in Mexico City. This woman says her lights went out, the house began to tremble, and things started falling. Subway passengers stuck inside a train station advised to lean against the wall as the quake hit. This car shuddering in the street, a traffic light rattling overhead. The power cut to nearly 2 million people for some time. Many evacuating their buildings in their pajamas, huddling with children and pets in the rain until things settled down. The Mexican president says one man riding his motorcycle died, but there were no reports of other serious injuries or catastrophic damage. Until about 5 a.m. local time, there were at least 150 aftershocks. Many are still without power, and Mexican officials say they're conducting reviews in 10 different states across the country. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Overseas to Europe, more than 11,000 people are currently waiting at the U.S. airbase in Ramstein, Germany. They're part of the evacuees that left Afghanistan. The airbase has so far received about 140 aircraft carrying evacuees. The group is waiting to go to their next destination, either the U.S. or some other safe location. Another 260 people expected to arrive at the airbase later today, while 1,300 are expected to be evacuated from the airbase today as well. So far, more than 23,000 evacuees have departed on approximately 90 flights from Ramstein in just the last few days. The trial for 20 men accused in the Paris terror attacks begins today in the French capital. The Islamic State group attacking across the city in 2015, leaving 130 people dead and hundreds more injured. The proceedings being held in a custom-built secure complex embedded within a 13th century courthouse. The def defendants are taken in one by one into a glass enclosed box at the side of the courtroom surrounded by armed officers. Back in November of 2015, nine gunmen and suicide bombers launched these attacks. They were all within minutes of each other at France's National Soccer Stadium, the Bataclan Concert Hall, as well as the Paris restaurants and cafes. Back here in the States, crews took a statue of Confederate General Robert E. Lee off its pedestal this morning in Richmond, Virginia. The statue was removed in front of a crowd of people, many cheering the decision to take it down. Now a work crew is cutting it in pieces so that it can be brought to a secure location. Elizabeth Holmes now facing off with the U.S. government in a California courtroom today. The founder and former CEO of Theranos faces up to 20 years in prison for allegedly misleading investors, patients and doctors. Holmes founded Theranos in 2003, claiming that it would revolutionize blood testing. But the company was dissolved just three years later after a 2015 investigation into its testing methods and capabilities. The Department of Justice has accused Holmes of committing fraud. She is pleading not guilty. Outside with live cam looks like every other day this week. Maybe a little pop-up shower here and there, but we could really use some substantial rain these days. Yeah, we're getting to that point now where we could use uh, at least a little more uh, heavy rain in spots. And we may get that. That's going to probably be next week, though, before that happens. In the meantime, we're dealing with uh, just partly cloudy skies out there. I, I want to show you a picture in a case I connect. This is pretty cool. That is uh, good photography. And uh, that's Ladybug there out in Hano. Claudia sent that in. We appreciate it as always. Claudia does a great job with the photos. A little bit of uh, dew drops maybe there on some of the grass. Thank you so much. And as we look at temperatures right now, we mentioned they're warming up. 93 stents and 92 New Braunfels, 86 Burning Stage, 93 Comfort. Area of clouds trying to work through here. We're going to see some partly cloudy skies for a time, I think, over the next couple of hours. And a few of these clouds could develop into a shower or two. There's an outside chance of that today, about 10%, especially as you go west of San Antonio. Then rain chances completely drop off. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then pick back up late on Sunday. And then Monday and Tuesday, we mentioned that potential for some heavy rain. Yeah, we may get it early next week as some tropical moisture works its way in here. Forecast for today, it's a hot one, 99. Hopefully we lose some of that humidity, although it is still humid now. Northeasterly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. We'll talk more about those lowering dew points and what's going on out in the Atlantic as well. Coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. 
Thank you, Justin. The National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism continually deride, remind people to drink responsibly with some important tips. Here's ABC's News, Elizabeth Schulze. Refreshing cocktails can seem like the perfect treat for a hot day, but the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism reminds people to drink responsibly. Just four to five drinks over a couple hours could turn your relaxing boating trip into a nightmare if you get behind the wheel. The U.S. Coast Guard reports that alcohol is the top contributor of deadly boating accidents. The guidelines warn people to be careful outdoors, too. Alcohol plus warm temperatures can lead to dehydration hydration or even heat stroke, a medical emergency. If you're drinking, make sure to stay hydrated. The Institute also wants everyone to remember that too much sun while drinking can be a bad combination. Alcohol can lower the sun exposure needed to produce a bad sunburn. So if you're going to drink outside, apply sunscreen and limit direct exposure to sunlight. With this Medical Minute, I'm Elizabeth Schulze. After several days on the run, a group of zebras are being returned to their owners. How they dazzled people in a Maryland community while they were free. And the head coach at UTSA talking about their rallying cry controversy coming up in a few minutes with Larry Ramirez in sports. Hulu raising its prices. How much more it's going to cost you to use the streaming app next. your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. Intel announcing plans to build two chip making factories in Ireland. This is valued up to 95 billion. This comes as the global chip shortage continues to slow down vehicle production for automakers like Ford, GM and Volkswagen. Intel aims to help automakers produce chips with processors far more advanced than the ones that are currently being used. Meanwhile, Facebook planning to launch their digital wallet service Novi this year. This is they look to earn the trust of Washington regulators. Head of Facebook Finance David Marcus says Novi ready to launch now. But first, they have to compensate its trust deficit with regulators. Facebook had initially announced their digital wallet ambitions back in 2019, but changed their representation plan following scrutiny from regulators. And Apple is set to unveil their latest line of iPhones at their California streaming event on September the 14th. After upgrades like 5G on last year's iPhone 12, the new iPhones may feature upgraded cameras and even a longer battery life. Now, while Apple did not specify their plans for the event, it lines up with their annual rollout for new iPhones every September, not counting last year because of the pandemic. And that's Cheddar News, business and tech update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. In other consumer news, as the streaming wars heat up, one service is raising its prices. Hulu is going to cost you a little bit more each month. It's raising its prices for it's uh, two on-demand streaming services by a dollar. So starting on October 8th, Hulu without ads is going to cost you $12.99 a month. The service without commercials, or rather with commercials, is $6.99. Prices will stay the same for Hulu Plus Live TV and its Disney streaming bundle. It's been around since 1997 when Barbara Walters launched it, and now it's back with some new episodes. Season 25 of The View began just before the news at noon this week. Whoopi Goldberg, Joe Behar, Sonny Hostin, and Sarah Haynes are back to deliver their hot takes on the day's biggest headlines. So what do the ladies of The View think is the reason behind the show's longevity? I think it's the spontaneity and the fact that we're unpredictable and we're live. And you just don't know what's going to come out of our mouths. <laughs> True, and I think yeah. that people enjoy that about this show. Yeah. The View airs on KSAT 12 at 11 a.m. right before the news at noon. And speaking of 25, the popular children's program Blues Clues celebrates its 25th anniversary this year. And today, the original host appeared on a video posted to the Nick Jr.'s Twitter account. Steve Burns sported that striped green shirt and hat that he wore as a host to the popular 1990s Nickelodeon series. He didn't age much, did he? Yeah, I see a little gray hair. Burns talked in character about his decision to leave the show in 2002 and thanked fans for their support. In a different video, he joined other hosts of the show in a song celebrating Blue. And the Dancing with the Stars cast revealed today. 
All right. There are some big names. Yeah. They're putting on their dancing shoes for a chance at the Mirror Ball Trophy. This time around, the cast includes WWE wrestler The Miz, singer and dancer Jojo Siwa. Sporty Spice herself, Melanie C., The Office's Laria Harden, and also Real Housewives of Atlanta, Kenya Moore. So there you I go. I thought Melanie was already on there, but maybe I was wrong. All right, caught on camera. Check it out. Ooh, I think we're supposed to still be at the story time. Are we supposed uh, to yeah. be there? A group of zebras going rogue. What are they doing? The pack was seen roaming around the community in Maryland for several days. They, they don't look rogue. Look like they're enjoying a little grazing to me. Cameras caught the zebras when they wandered into a field. But before this, they walked through neighborhoods. Some people say they spotted the group in their backyards. The zebras are legally owned. They escaped from a farm and the owners did try to get them back. Eventually, they're able to corral these wild animals by luring them to feeding stations because it's all about the food. Wait a minute, they, they, do they look like wild animals? Okay, so I'm gonna tell you something. They look really sweet and cute, yeah. right? Yeah. Those are the meanest animals on the face of the earth. If well, you, you can't ride them, Ursula. Yeah, well, I know someone who does <laughs> and um, they are, stubborn and mean <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. Uh, I mean, just yeah. fit to be tied, as my grandmother would there say. You can't yeah. believe you're bad-mouthing zebras. <laughs> I'm just warning you, if you see a zebra, zebra, do not trust it to be sweet and cuddly. <laughs> okay, good information. Let's go live outside. Uh, you can see some clouds there. Hey, I want to alert folks in Kerrville. There is a shower right over top of you. We'll take a look at that coming up here in just a second. First of the Almanac. 91 so far today. The average is 92, so we will be above average today. The record is actually in jeopardy. I don't know that we quite get there, but we'll get off a close 101. Set back in 1993, 59's the record low set back in 1918. We'll look at the radar, get you updated for those uh, folks there in Kerrville coming up. We're talking. Well, they're mean. That it's, Zebras yes. are mean. Do not trust them. Wow. Yeah, okay. I did and, not know that. and they, um, you don't see them running around as domesticated animals very much, do you? They looked awful calm and cool and collected in the video. We just saw. not trust a zebra. Not to trust a zebra. It will bite you as fast and as And Justin it said you. You, there's some other zebras you got yeah, you got a question too. He's been watching a lot of football. <laughs> yeah, don't get me in trouble with the referees, okay? That's a whole other subject. They do a great job. They really do. <laughs> Uh, we we got to get to the radar, guys, because there are some showers starting to pop up. Uh, we're seeing that uh, around Kerrville. We mentioned that this was possible. A little disturbance rolling through. There's just enough moisture to get some of this activity going. And uh, right over the city of Kerrville, quick shower. Now, this is not going to last very long, but if you're watching us from Kerrville, you probably got a quick downpour, and now it's almost over. This is going to continue to move south and west and probably fall apart. But we'll see a few more of these pop up, I think, throughout the afternoon, generally west of San Antonio. There could be a few lightning strikes. There could be some gusty winds with this, too. I should mention that uh, with anything that develops. Very quickly, I want to take you back in history. It was on this day, 1921, that we started to see some heavy rain here in San Antonio. It turned out to be one of San Antonio's worst floods, 10 feet of water in the downtown area. This was over a three-day span. And this is the reason, this flood is the reason we have Almost Dam and the Riverwalk. Uh, those were flood control projects after this flood. City wanted to make sure this didn't happen again, but pretty interesting. This happened 100 years ago. Uh, one of the bigger floods here in San Antonio. Quick flashback. And, you know, one of the reasons that flood occurred is there was a tropical storm that moved into Mexico and then eventually worked its way up into Texas. And that's why we saw the heavy rain back then. What about the tropics now? Where do we stand? Well, we have Hurricane Larry out here. This is a, a big hurricane, but thankfully it's not going to cause a lot of problems. And then there's a little area here. The Hurricane Center is flagged just a 20% chance. A lot of time to watch that. Uh, additionally, there is a system here in the Gulf. This is actually moving north and east, and the Hurricane Center is not really concerned about this developing until it reemerges out in the Atlantic. So I don't think this is going to be a huge problem. We will watch it. There's a tropical depression out in the Pacific as well. So things are active. And I think towards the first part of next week, we could get some tropical moisture in here. Not necessarily a tropical system, but some moisture in the South Texas. Right now, we're at 91 at the airport, 93 Stinson, 98 Kelly, 89 at Randolph. 
Temperatures are in the 90s in a lot of spots now. We're seeing things rapidly warm up. 95 in Catula, 90, on Kennedy, 90 in Kennedy, and you can bet that we will see some triple digits today. Here's the forecast humidity, and we're going to fast forward now to 6 o'clock this afternoon. Notice the dew points falling off into the 60s and even 50s in some locations. By tomorrow morning, the numbers don't really come up. Typically in the mornings we would see these dew points shoot up. They're not going to low 60s, so that's why we're going to see some comfortable mornings going forward. And even tomorrow afternoon, the dew points stay relatively low. So that's uh, why we've been talking about the fact that it's more of a dry heat. Uh, the radar and satellite, we showed you the radar earlier with some of those showers and storms popping up. You can see some of the clouds beginning to develop here with that disturbance rolling through. And there's another look at that little shower there just west of Kerrville. Now, we've got some additional showers showing up just north of Junction. And the forecast does call for some of this activity to continue to move through this afternoon uh, across the whole country and maybe out towards Del Rio before dying down tonight. Forecast here in San Antonio, 99 degrees, 10% chance of rain Again, generally west of town, northeast Julie winds will be a little bit gusty, 10 to 15 miles per hour. And uh, again, we may see some of that tropical moisture working its way in Monday and Tuesday. That's when we've upped rain chances. In the meantime, it's hot. 100 Thursday, 99 Friday, 98 Saturday. Some increase in clouds on Sunday, 20% chance of rain, and then a 40% shot. Add some showers and good downpours, it looks like, Monday and Tuesday, guys. Oh, that looks good. Thank you. Yep. High school football season basically just getting underway, but we've already had some really good games, and this Friday night's going to be the same, huh? Yeah, um, some teams, including uh, Central Catholic, off to a very good start undefeated, and they're going to face an undefeated Alamo Heights this coming Friday night at newly renovated Orem Stadium. And look at that beautiful stadium. We'll have more on that coming up. Plus, Brendan Brady had himself a big game for the Roadrunners. We got it coming up next. USA President Taylor Amy has decided to do away with the football rallying cry, come and take it, which originated from the 1835 Battle of Gonzales. A former UTSA professor created the petition to urge the university to end the slogan, saying it's racist towards Mexican Americans, and ask for it to be removed from the Roadrunners' $41 million brand new race facility. It has also been used in some political protests. Roadrunners football head coach Jeff Trailer was asked his thoughts about the controversy this morning after practice. Uh, you know, we know our lane. That, that's not our lane. Uh, you know, the, we also know how passionate our fan base is about it. They've made that evidently clear uh, to, to, uh, <laughs> through many messages. Uh, but we also understand the predicament our president's in. He's in a very tough decision. And uh, so he's the president. That's the decision he made. We're going to support his decision. Our job is to go win football games and, and be really good on the football field. That's what I was hired to do. And that's what our players understand as well. Back to football, the Roadrunners dropped 217 rushing yards on the fight in the Illini defense in the Roadrunners 37-30 season opening win at Illinois. Sincere McCormick had 117 rushing yards, while Brendan Brady added 67 yards and 11 carries for an average of 6.1 yards per tote to go with two touchdowns. Illinois had problems trying to stop the Steel Knight. It's a good feeling to just be able to help your team any, anywhere possible. Um, you know, I don't really look at it as far as my uh, individual stats or anything like that. I'm just trying to help the team. Um, and, you know, sincere, he had 30 carries. That's a lot for any guy in college football. Um, and, uh, you know, I just got to tip your hat to him. Just being able to carry basically the offense on his back for 30 carries is incredible. Um, so any chance I get to go in there and just relieve him of that for a little while, you know, I'm going to go out there and give it the, give my all because just that's that's how I've been wired to play. Um, you know, I just I just want to be able to help my team and, and being able to stay healthy and do that for game one. It was definitely huge for me. It was, it was a blessing. Kickoff in the Alamo Dome this Saturday for their home opener with Lamar is set for 5 p.m. And KSAT 12 Sports will be there. One of our big games this Friday night will feature an early season battle of unbeaten Central Catholic in Alamo Heights. The button surprised a lot of folks when the private school knocked off Southwest, a 6A school in their season opener, 31-7, and followed that up last week with a 44-7 win against Bernie Geneva for a combined 75 points scored while allowing only 14. It has earned the Buttons a number four ranking in 12's top 12 sub 5A poll. For Alamo Heights, the Mules are also off to 2 0 start with a big comeback 34 30 victory versus Bernie, and then last week holding off Churchill 21 13. That has moved them up to number seven in 12's top 12 among the class 6A and 5A schools. I know they're a strong team. I know they're good. It's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a fight. Every snap, it's going to be a battle. So it's going to be a good game. 
we needed all the momentum we need. Uh, Central Catholic, they're a really good team. They got a really good quarterback, really good defense, and we're going to need all of it to get past them. Kickoff at the newly renovated Orem Stadium is Friday night, and it's set for seven. If you're just a regular high school football fan, at some point this year, you got to watch Central Catholic because you got to watch those two guys on 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 the line. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, they have. They're bigger than you and me. They have together. one of the best offensive line in the city <laughs> for <laughs> sure, and then their starting quarterback side of this Gomez is impressive as well. <laughs> yes, so you're pulling for them. I'm just saying, if you like, I mean, if you just want to see some big guys out on the field playing some ball. Yes, right. man, no, there's some big guys. Go watch them. All right, we're gonna head over to SA Live. Two oh, of our favorite what people. Is this? Beautiful, right? And it's our birthday. Yes. Happy ha birthday, SA Live. Happy birthday. <laughs> Seven years old, and of course, you can't have a birthday without a cake. Yes, this is a cake. Let me tell you, this thing is a cake. ton. Oh, yes, Dario's indeed. Bakery provided this for us, and we're going with the lucky number seven theme here. Yep. Isn't that awesome? He is a magician when it comes to making <laughs> cakes. And guess what? We're going to tell you how you can enter win a gift card to maybe apply toward your own very special mm, cake like this. stick around to watch. But first, if you want an inexpensive, family-friendly Vegas-themed party, Stephanie Pena Frost with Princess and the monkey decor has some amazing ideas, including this one. Oh yeah, that is a fun little match game that you can do with your kids. You just take some playing cards, cut them in half, rearrange them, and have them match away. Ooh, fun for a party. Hey, want a party? Want to decorate? Loof was here and decorated our studio. How beautiful is this? And they have a special deal all throughout the month of September. We're going to tell you do. about that one. Yes, and we want to know your favorite SA Live moments. Share those with us coming up on SA Live.